In this video, we're building on the AWS Directory Service project we did earlier. If you haven't seen that video yet, I would recommend checking it out first. The link is in the description and should show up as a pop-up in this video. That original project laid the foundation by deploying an Active Directory domain, mcloud.mycloud.com, in the US East 2 region. We created several users and groups and stood up both Linux and Windows EC2 instances that were joined to the domain. Both machines were public facing, so that means SSH and RDP ex were exposed directly to the internet, which obviously isn't a uh, ideal secure setup. So in this follow-up, we're gonna adapt the project for AWS workspaces, bringing in cloud-based desktops as secure entry points. This service is often referred to as DAS or desktop as a service. Azure has its own offering and AWS has their own offering for DAS. Now, we need to do several things a little bit differently in this project. The first thing is we have to relocate the entire employment to US East 1, since workspaces aren't supported in US East 2. So uh, we have a link in the documentation that shows you all the zones and regions where workspaces are supported. So not only is it only supported in these, uh, in these regions, it's only in certain availability zones. So it, this is about half of the total regions in AWS. So about half the regions support uh, workspaces and other half doesn't. Next, we are going to make our EC2 instances private. So no more internet access, no public exposure. After we've built our Active Directory instance, we'll register it for, uh, re register it for AWS workspaces. At that point, we will provision a workspace for our admin user, and that becomes the uh, sort of the admin box for Active Directory. You can install the Active Directory tools, um, and then from the administrative tools, you'll be able to administer Active Directory from this workspace. Okay, at the end of the project, the workspace becomes our secure gateway into our AWS environment. We can access those private EC2 instances as uh, local IP addresses or private IP addresses. They don't have to be publicly exposed. So in this way, you can think of it as not only as a, as a virtual desktop, but as a cloud hosted jump box into our environment. Okay, let's take a quick look at the architecture diagram. It, it's been moved to ES, US East 1, like we said earlier. The two subnets are now private so that's where the domain controller goes and the Windows instance and the Linux instance. The, um, these instances are private, like we said before, so there's no uh, public SSH or RDP access. And then we create a secrets for all the users and accounts. There's four users and accounts that we can access the system in. And then we're going to attach the AWS uh, directory service to workspaces and I guess it's technically called register it for workspaces. And then we're going to create an admin AWS workspace using a, uh, I think a Windows uh, Server 2022 image as our starting point. Now let's talk about the prerequisites. The prerequisites are very similar to the other projects that we've done. You need to have an AWS account. You need to have the AWS CLI. You need to have the latest Terraform installed, and then you need a Workspaces client. If you haven't done our video before, you might want to look at our AWS and Terraform easy setup. That creates a really simple project and allows you to verify that you have all the plumbing necessary for do, doing the work without having to worry about the complexities of this project. Okay, so now it's time for us to build the code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy this here, bring up my Ubuntu development environment, paste that in. Okay, so we've gotten the code. Now, one of the things that you will notice is that it's the same project, but it's a different branch. So if I do git branch, you'll see it, it's the same project in GitHub, but it's a different branch. It's the workspaces branch. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run check EMV, and that's going to validate that all your connections are valid. So you've got AWS, Terraform, etc. It successfully worked. 
Now we're at the point where we can run the build. Okay, so you run apply.sh, ready to wait for the build. Now, just an FYI, the build takes approximately 45 minutes to run. Okay, the build has completed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the AWS console and take a look at what got built. So, so the first thing we're going to do look at is we're going to go look at the directory service. And the first thing is make sure you switch to uh, US East 1 here at the top. Uh, I was working on US East 2 earlier, but US East 1 is what's required to look at this project's artifacts. So we've got mcloud.mycloud.com, just like it was created before. And the network and security, you've got the two DNS addresses, and it's, they're between the two subnets, now a private subnet. So that's it for the directory service, just like before. So now let's go to workspaces. And in workspaces, we've got a couple of things to look at. First, look at the directories. You'll see that the AWS directory we were looking at before has been registered for workspaces. Uh, that was done in the Terraform. And then if you go to the personal section, you will see that we created an admin uh, for uh, the workspace and we're using Windows Server 2022. You can go look at the details. It's, it's uh, deployed with auto stop, which is to control costs. This is the one we will ultimately be logging into. So that's it for the workspace and we'll go through and this is the registration code, which we'll have to use later to actually log into it. And then the last uh, thing we're going to show is on EC2. And then you'll see the two instances, the Windows AD instance, the Linux AD instance, both join to our, our Active Directory instance. But the thing that I wanted to point out is if you go in here and you look at the public IP address, there's no public IP address on these, just the private IP address. So those are the elements of what we built, the directory service, the workspace definition, and then the private instances. Okay, now let's test the solution. Let's test our workspace. So if you go back to the build console, you will see that uh, there was several things that have been spit out here. Uh, the most important thing is your registration code. We also, it spins out the, the web client URL. So we're going to do two things. We're going to log in with the web client, and they're going to log in with the desktop client. So what I'm going to do is I am going to copy this guy right here. Copy, bring up the browser, and there it is. Now I need to go back and get the registration code. The registration code is this guy right here. Be that. Go back, put it in there, hit register. Now the first thing you're going to notice is I br I did I used the branding for workspaces and put a little channel brand here with subscribe. Uh, I put that in there sort of like as a bonus material. So if you are going to brand this for your clients, you can do that by just setting up some special images and putting the text in there. So look for brand.sh on how to do that. So I'm going to sign in. And what we need to do is we need to go back to the console and go to Secrets Manager. And that's where we have all the user IDs and passwords stored for this project. So I'm going to click on Admin Credentials, Retrieve Value, and there are the values. So I'm going to go back to the client, and I'm going to say Sign In. So the first time it comes up, it may take five or six minutes to process. Uh, but at this point, you have your desktop, and you're within the environment um, within the your VPC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do MSTSC and I'm going to go back to the console and I am going to the Windows server is this guy right here. So I'm going to pop this in. So this is the EC2 instance that was public, public but it's now private. So I'm, I've pierced into the VPC with the workspace and I'm going to connect to it here and I'm going to say connect to it. And I need to set, um, use a different account and say, I'll tell. 
And then I'm going to go back to my credentials manager, hit secrets, find Arpitel, retrieve secret value, click on the password, go back to my session, and put in the password. And so I am going to click on OK. And this is going to do the remote desktop session for the private EC2 instance. So you can see it's going to log in as Raj. OK, so here is the desktop environment. It's kind of a little bit weird because I'm in a uh, desktop workspace going to another desktop. So this is uh, how you connect to it from the Windows client. So let me clear here. Then I'm going to bring up the Workspaces Windows client. And in it, I have to do the same thing. I have to go back and find my um, Workspace code, which is the Celiad one here. I'm going to poke that into um, register that. And you're going to see that branding information again. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do admin. And I can say admin password. And so we're right back to where we were. So what I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to close this guy right here. I'm going to do a PowerShell. And I'm going to SSH to R Patel at, and let's go back to our um, thing. And then DNS server for the Linux server is this guy right here. So I'm going to copy that, paste that in. It's going to say yes. And now I got to go back and look up his password again. So I go back to secrets, look at Raj Patel, hit retrieve secret value, copy, put it back into the client, paste. And there we've logged in as uh, on Linux. And it uses the identity provider, so I can do ID R Patel, uh, T M Cloud users, and then I've got India. So this is all the uh, things that we showed in the previous video. Okay, so that is it for the workspaces. I access it from the desktop client. I access it from the, the cloud client. And I'm going to close this get into if people were interested leave a comments below if you would like to see me do a video on taking a workspace and creating a custom bundle and image which will allow you to install what software you want on the uh, workspaces um and you know there's, there's a process to that and i'll be happy to do a video on that if there's some interest but at this point you're using a lot of expensive services so what we want to do is we want to go back. We want to be good stewards or a cloud environment. We want to go back to our project and we want to run destroy to clean up and make sure not we're running up any, any uh, charges.